Yo, 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 welcome to Hard Pass. I am your host, Jacques Slade. Today on the show, we've got the end of an era in sneakers, which is basically just a lot of talk about the Jordan 1s. Microsoft and Activision maybe not actually hooking up after all. The week's highest releases and of course, a hard pass. All right, let's start with some hot takes straight from my phone that is absolutely not concerned about my screen time. No, we're not concerned about my screen time at all. Anyway, so people are starting to get their pairs from the huge reimagined Jordan 1 restocks and they are complaining that the mold problem that affected a significant number of ones last year is also an issue with this release. Man, you know things are not getting well when factory defects are also getting a retro. Congrats to Javante Davis for his big win over Ryan Garcia over the weekend. Tank also made a sneaker headline when he rocked a custom pair of Skunk SB Dunks for boxing boots and for trying to look excited when he received a pair of the Nike Jaw one day one. Look, I'm sure the lack of excitement had more to do with Tank having a million things going through his mind after the fight, but yeah, maybe Ja could have sent him the 12 a.m. pair with the Swarovski crystals or better yet, a custom Ja one boxing boot with the crystals on them. Then maybe he would have looked excited. I don't know. Um, you can now put swoosh gibbets on your Crocs. Like, I'm actually kind of surprised that none of the big sneaker brands thought to actually do this and officially collab with Crocs. Like, sure, you could buy a bootleg swoosh or three stripes or Under Armour gibbets. Okay, okay, well, maybe not a UA logo, but a Curry brand logo gibbets, maybe? Well, anyway, that would be, I would put that on my Crocs. If I was below the age of 10, I would definitely put a UA, I mean, sorry, Curry brand gibbets on, sorry. Anyway, feel like it's just a missed opportunity here on both sides. Just don't do an official Supreme Gibbets Crocs. Partner with a brand that's still relevant and not just coasting off past glory that was kinda overrated to begin with. BR Kicks shared this picture of a poster on Reddit showing off a photo of their dad wearing the Jordan 1 bread from back in the days. That's honestly pretty cool, especially when you look at the shoes and you can tell that they have been put through the ringer. That type of moment can never happen again because 20 years from now, some kid is going to share a hologram of their dad's IG reel with 300 views that someone scuffed their reimagined ones and that they can't wear them anymore. And that just makes me sad on the inside. Oh, uh, hey, DC Shoes, we know what you did. Don't even try to fake like you don't know what you did. We know and you know that we know that you know. You know? Hmm. So LeBron has a Four Horsemen Air Force One dropping this week that was previously a 2003 PE that was an homage to his inner circle that includes himself, Maverick Carter, Rich Paul, and Randy Mims. Hmm. Between the inner circle and Four Horsemen, Bron really does have wrestling on the mind. Or is it just a coincidence and I'm making too much of who's who in the group? Like LeBron is obviously the flair and Mav and Rich are the Arn and Tully and Mims is like a floater fourth. Like it's Barry Windham for a few years, then it's Lex Luger, then Brian Pillman and Dean Malenko. Just a lot of possibilities there, honestly. Shout out to this OG who showed off a number of early 2000s sneakers, AKA stuff that every sneaker reseller should have instead of the same five pair of dunks that came out in the past month. Like really kids, try harder to stock sneakers that are at least 10 to 15 years old so there's something in the store worth looking at. You're not impressing anybody with your wall of Panda Dunks and Bear Bricks that every other store has. All right, it's time for the heat check where we bring you everything that's dropping this week. These are some of our favorites. We have the Adidas Trey Young 2, Better Scarlet on the first for 140. Women's Nike Gamma Force for $90 on the same day. The Nike LeBron NXXT Gen Light on wood brown, that's on the first for 160. The Nike Dunk Low Black Wood Grain on the second for 110. The SB Dunk Low Wolf Gray for 110 as well. The Nike Jaw One Trivia on the fourth for 110. The Nike Air Pulse Cobblestone on the fourth for 150. The Women's Air Jordan 2 Cool Gray, that's gonna be $175. The Aim Leon Dior New Balance 1906R in green and gold, that's 170. The Air Jordan 37, nothing but net, on the, that's going to be on the 4th for 175 The Air Jordan 1 High Retro OG Elephant Print, that's on the 6th for 180 The Air Jordan 2 Cement Gray, aka Skyline, that's going to be 170 Pharrell and Adidas Human Race Samba, that's going to be on the 6th. And then the Reebok Question Low Oatmeal is on the 7th for 120 And then for our pick of the week, 
we're gonna go with the Doritos Nike SB Dunk Low. This is gonna be on the six for 130. Dropping these on May 6th has a lot of, no, we're not going to let you make the jokes like it's 420 or it's May the 4th energy. Regardless, I'm starting to really come around on sneakers that have tearaway uppers or burnable uppers or wear away uppers or any other gimmick that gives people the added value of being able to customize their sneakers without having to turn into amateur versions of Mosh or Shoe Surgeon. This collaboration with the popular Mexican soda brand has tearaway overlays and swooshes to reveal a more colorful iteration of the shoe that references the Mandarin flavor. There's also a full capsule collection with apparel and other gear, so basically be on the lookout for that as well. We have the Kobe Bryant Memorial Pick of the Week, meaning Kobe Pro Trolls will always get a feature on this show, basically. Sorry, but not sorry. The Nike Kobe 4 Pro Troll Mambasita on the first for 180. Releasing to coincide with what would have been the late Gianna Bryant's 17th birthday, this Kobe 4 Pro Troll contains several tributes to Mambasita, like the Kobe 6 Pro Troll Mambasita. Expect these to be tough to get no matter how many they make. Okay. That's not actually true. I'm sure Nike could make enough to satisfy demand, but we all know that's not going to happen. As a business, I understand why Nike does this because they want to maintain the narrative that Kobe sneakers are elusive and tough to get, and therefore you should get them when they drop. And whatever magic number that Nike has decided is just right, a good chunk of that is going to go to opportunistic resellers who couldn't give a less and they're okay with profiting off an homage to the late daughter of a legendary father who passed away so tragically. It's kind of crass. I wish we didn't have to talk about this. I wish we didn't have to complain to Nike that they needed to make Kobe Protros in the millions. I wish we didn't have to talk about Kobe Protros at all. I wish the only time we talked about Kobe Protros is wondering why they're ending up at Nike outlets because that would mean Kobe, Gigi, and everybody else who lost their life that day are still here. Look, just make more Nike. Hmm. So. That went places. Sorry to bring the mood down there for a second. But so let's let's pivot to something a little less serious, like the Artifact Air Force Ones. We've been poking fun at this whole dot swoosh thing now for the past few months, even though myself and everybody who works on the show and used to work here has secured their names on the platform. But man, nothing about these NFTs that you can magically turn into real Takashi Murakami Air Force Ones is exciting. What is exciting though, are these 3D billboards of the same mid sneakers popping up in Japan? Okay, so maybe this has more to do with Japan and the 3D billboards and the shoes themselves, but it doesn't hurt, Nike. More Japan, less NFTs. UK regulators are halting the Microsoft merger bid with Activision Blizzard over concerns that it would stifle cloud gaming. I had no idea lawmakers in the UK were so in tune with the modern gaming concerns. That's actually kind of cool especially when you consider the clowns we have here in congress that can't tell the difference between a TikTok from a tic tac or a tuk tuk of course it could just be a bunch of sony lobbyists grabbing the attention of a bunch of key people but i like to believe in the fantasy in my head for a second that politicians might give a shit about things like how smooth the frame rate of street fighter 6 will be in the cloud anyway Microsoft says they're going to fight this so it's going to be a while before we get the call of duty catalog on game pass if ever honestly i don't personally care how this merger goes either way i just worry about the discourse online with everybody bunkering down and picking sides like it's the 90s console wars again you want my privilege solution buy both consoles and a switch while you're at it and speaking of call of duty activision is announcing a cod board game is on the way great because what the world needs in 2023 a 12 year olds who like to say the N word hanging out in real life with other 12 year olds who get a kick out of yelling transphobic slurs. This game should come with a content warning, not because of the actual game, but the edgelords who will play it. So the new trailer for The Flash is here and wow. I, I, I normally don't say this about anything that's still remotely related to the Snyderverse, but The Flash looks interesting. Like. It's basically an old Batman and young Supergirl movie with the Flash kind of sort of in there because reasons. Yes, the marketing of the movie this way likely has something to do with the star Ezra Miller's litany of controversies, but it would be a real D move on DC's part if Batman and Supergirl are really only there for like 10 minutes a piece and the rest of the movie is the Flash melodrama that no one really cares about. Anyway, before we get to Hard Pass, I just wanna throw this one at you for no reason. It's just a thought that I had. What would the sneaker equivalent of the Beyond Stupid Twitter saga be? It would be like Nike deciding to make all of their shoes available to everybody. No more limited drops, no more player exclusives, no more friends and family only pairs, no more meetings for DJ Khaled. 
actually, now, everybody, we're all, we all can get in the meeting. Well, that's as long as you pay for it. However, the cool kids, they don't care about sneakers anymore because they're no longer exclusive or they never really cared for the free stuff they got in the first place. It was just cool because it was free. So this, of course, annoys the most online of sneakerheads because now that they can get the shoes that only the cool kids got before, no one cares when they flex because, well, everyone else can get them or it was never really cool in the first place. Meanwhile, the rest of the world just goes about their lives and can get the sneakers that they want and laughs at Dylan Brook memes while they wait for the next thing to pop off because no sneaker company or social media platform is meant to rule forever. It's cool for a few years or in the case of Nike, a few decades, the olds and the trolls get a hold of it and ruin the fun and we move on to the next thing. All right, it's time for the actual week's hard pass. We're gonna take a look at something in the culture that just needs to go. Like Travis Scott Air Jordan 1s. Okay, I guess it's less of a hard pass and more of a happy trails or see you later or until we meet again, maybe? Last week was the release of the women's exclusive Travis Scott Air Jordan 1 Low in the Olive Colorway. To no one's surprise, the launch went miserably on Sneakers app and wherever they were sold and all the familiar memes popped up. We're closing in on a decade now of dealing with L's people. Either get used to it or delete the app. Or at least come up with better memes so I can at least laugh at your pain or something. Anyways, according to Mr. Unloved Ones, a very popular Jordan 1 centric account on social media, the Olive will be the final Travis Air Jordan 1. The word is that the next Cactus Jack Jordan brand collaboration will feature the Air Jordan 7 with a brand new design or gimmick. Not gonna lie, as lazy as those photoshops that I have seen online of the Air Jordan 7 with the reverse swoosh just slapped on top, I think it would be hilarious if that was the final product. It's like those photoshops of the Across the Spider-Verse ones that were so atrocious and missed the mark so badly when the actual shoe leaked. Huh. Maybe this hard pass should be on bad photoshops. Might have to rethink this whole episode. Anyway, now that Travis is done with the Jordan 1s, uh, at least for the foreseeable future, what do we ultimately think? Think about it. Officially, there are seven Cactus Jack ones in highs and lows. There are samples and friends and family pairs that will probably remain in the vault for the time being, but man, who could have guessed Ben Affleck would be one of those cool kids with a Chicago version, allegedly, of course. Released over a four year span from 2019 to last week, was Travis one factor or the main factor in keeping the hype train of the Air Jordan 1 going for as long as it did? Think about 2019, the year the first Cactus Jack Air Jordan 1 dropped. Along with the Cactus Jack, we also got Jordan SB1s LA to Chicago and New York to Paris and the Lowe's, the fearless collection of mids that made people pay attention to mids, the shattered backboard 3.0s, the satin black toes and more. If you take the Cactus Jack out of the equation, was it a weak year of ones? In 2020, everything was out of whack for reasons beyond sneakers, so talking about that year isn't really worth it. But in 2021 and 22, we saw more Travis Scott Jordan 1s release along his various other Nike collabs, but his momentum into becoming a mainstream star was halted after the Astro tragedy. And now, in 2023, with ones at their highest in terms of, I would say, visibility, but arguably weakest in terms of hype and quality in a long time, Travis appears to be getting out of the business of ones at the right time. It'll be interesting to see if he can work his magic on the sevens, especially when you consider that they are not as highly regarded as the fours and sixes to previous models with Cactus Jack releases. But anyways, back to my initial question about Travis's work on the Air Jordan 1. Assuming that the olives are truly the last Jordan 1 we ever see, what is the legacy of Cactus Jack ultimately going to be? There's no doubt he's on the short list of most successful collaborators to work on the Jordan 1. But does he earn the top spot though? His competition would include the late Virgil Abloh and his off-white brand, Trophy Room and their inherited advantage, Christian Dior and their luxury cosign, Union and their bespoke game changers. I don't personally have a pick, but let's hypothetically defend Travis for a second. There are a lot of critics out there who would openly dismiss what Travis did as a one-trick pony, the trick being the reverse swoosh. And if you were to believe Dennis Rodman, he started the whole reverse swoosh gimmick. And I understand that argument to a certain degree, but couldn't you say that Travis, fundamentally changing how the Air Jordan 1 looks with the reverse swoosh is a lot more impactful than what Virgil did or what Union did. Yes, Virgil deconstructed the ones and gave them an unfinished look, but at the end of the day, they still mostly look like Chicago ones or UNC ones. 
Union turned the ones into their own personal Frankenstein monster, but they didn't look that different from the Black Toe ones or the Storm Blue ones. Dior ones are just ones with their iconic print on the swoosh. In Trophy Room, well, Marcus gave you Chicago ones with blue laces and y'all ate it up. On the base level, the reverse swoosh changes how we look at a Jordan one. I mean, take a look at the Mocha Jordan ones, AKA the Constellation Prize Cactus Jack ones. That's what the Cactus Jack ones look like without the reverse swoosh. It's plain, it's generic, it's basic. Nothing wrong with that, as some of the best Jordans ever made are basic as hell, but the Mocha ones are especially basic. Now, look at the Travis ones. Good, bad, or indifferent, the presentation of the Jordan one changes thanks to that tweak. It might as well be an entirely different skew. I mean, it is a different skew, but you get the idea. It's an entirely different sneaker. To reiterate, I'm not saying that I believe that, but it's definitely an argument that you might hear from someone who might stand for Travis. Now, if you're thinking, oh, this was a mostly positive hard pass, Jacques didn't really give anything a hard pass. Well, let me end the show on this. I am really, really, really done with the Travis Fragment design ones. In particular, the lows. The highs didn't really do much for me if we're being honest, but the lows were cool. Like, so cool that I can't leave the house without seeing someone in a beat up pair. They are so prevalent that if I never see one for the rest of my existence, it'll be too soon. Beyond a shadow of a doubt, easily the most common pair that I've seen from the Travis Jordan one over when really they should be the rarest of the bunch. And the resale prices that I've seen online would indicate that they are pretty darn rare. So I don't want to accuse everybody that I've seen wearing these sneakers as perpetuating reps or unauthorized authentics or good fakes or whatever you want to call it. But I will say, stop wearing them, real or fake. I'm so done with him. If any sneaker was not him, this is it. And also, this is my opinion. Wear what you like. All right, that's going to do it for the show. Thanks for watching Hard Pass. I am Jacques Slade. I'll see you next week. If you'd like to possibly be featured in a future episode, call us at 818-493-9325. Leave a short message or social media if you want. No more than 30 seconds. All right, I'll see you next week. Peace.